Hi, my name is Khalil Gibran Muhammad. I am the Suzanne Young Murray Professor at the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study and a Professor of History, Race, and Public Policy at the Harvard Kennedy School. I do a lot of work that helps people think about the limitations of big data. And I know how compelling big data is in an age when algorithms help us predict all sorts of complex phenomena. Uh, most people understand this uh, form of computer science through uh, advertisements on Facebook uh, that track your mouse clicks and tailor specific choices um, to you, uh, the potential buyer. Well, that's just one example, but big data has been around a long time and it's not just in the computer age. Turns out, just about a century ago, uh, demographers and social scientists, people we know to be social sociologists and political scientists today, began to use large sets of administrative data, uh, often government data, and especially United States Census reports. Uh, they also used annual reports from uh, police agencies and school systems. All of this data became an important way of measuring the health and welfare of various groups in American society and indeed around the globe. We today continue to use this kind of demographic uh, data. It certainly helps the distribution of resources from direct social service agencies to the federal government. But it turns out that one thing that often goes missing is that the data we use is not as objective as we'd like to think. It turns out that on one hand, the early use of demographic data was intended to sort or rank various racial groups based on their fitness for participation in America's industrial economy. Think about it. Uh, the Irish were very much considered inferior immigrants as compared to the Germans or to English immigrants, and Italians or Polish Catholics uh, were also deemed inferior. The demographic data about how many came to America, uh, how many babies did they have, what were their crime rates, were not objective in the sense that uh, they were intended to simply describe these groups. Uh, they were biased in the sense that they were collected in the first place to determine how much of a threat these groups pose to American society and how much control should be administered in making sure that society uh, would not be damaged by them. That's a tough lesson, I think, because that lesson is one that is still with us today. The best example of this is African Americans, for example. To this day, we have tremendous uh, empirical evidence or big data on the health and welfare of African Americans in American society. We know far more over the last hundred years about uh, various kinds of achievement gaps, wealth and income gaps, housing gaps, crime gaps. All of these gaps uh, are ways for us to see that African Americans are not on the same scale as whites. But it wasn't intended from the beginning uh, as a call for a liberal intervention or a way of helping black people, it was intended to justify discrimination. Now, this may come as a surprise to some, so let me be more specific. If I asked you right now how many Irish or Italian burglars were arrested last year, what would be your answer? How about Polish murderers or German drunk drivers? You can't answer any of those questions because we don't statistically track the crimes of those groups. But we do track the crimes of African Americans set against a normal category that's called white, as if white people are not diverse themselves and represent various nationalities and traditions from all around the world. So in this example, what I've shown you is that we used to think that the crime statistics of the Irish or the Italians was important, and there was tremendous amount of social scientific inquiry, collection of big data, and analysis of that big data. We don't do it anymore, but we continue to do the same for African Americans as we did a long time ago. So when we think about mass incarceration 
or how many black babies born today, say one in three, will eventually spend time in prison. The fact that we know so much is not an accident. It was a deliberate attempt a long time ago to prove the inferiority of black people just as it was a deliberate attempt to prove the inferiority of the Italians or the Irish or the Polish Catholics, so on and so forth. The lesson I think for students today is to recognize that the information we collect, the choices we make in what to analyze, the interpretive frames we use uh, in order to draw meaning from those are all a consequence of both our history and our contemporary political choices. Mm -hmm.